as, as you've heard, my name's Simon Griffiths, and I want to talk to you about one of my social ventures today. And really, this all started actually thinking about TED. And TED is, um, I guess, about ideas that kind of challenge the way that we think and, and potentially have the capacity to change lives. A few years ago, I realized that there was actually one life that we were forgetting about. I'm talking, of course, about the life of toilet paper. <laughs> now, I realize that toilet paper's been behind us every single day of our lives, <laughs> and I thought that it was time for us to get behind toilet paper. So I started a toilet paper company that uses its profits to build toilets in the developing world. Now, I'm not going to lie to you, this all started because toilets are funny, let's face it. <laughs> They're so funny, they've actually got their, their own genre of humor named after them. But the truth is, toilets aren't actually that funny for 40% of the world, because 40% of the world, or about 2.5 billion people, don't have access to a toilet. This is a huge problem. We, uh, we basically have urine and feces that's ending up in water that's used to cook, clean, and wash. And as a result, the diarrheal-related disease that comes from this is basically filling half of the hospital beds in sub-Saharan Africa and killing about 2,000 children under the age of five every single day. Now, there's actually a pretty straightforward solution to this problem. All that we need to do is build toilets, right? We know that toilets improve health and well-being, they increase life expectancy, they even increase school attendance rates. We know that every one dollar that's invested in sanitation results in an eight dollar increase in economic productivity. I guess the real question is, where does this one dollar come from? Now, that's why I started this toilet paper company. And the idea is that we sell an environmentally friendly toilet paper product here in the developed world and use 50% of our profits to build toilets in the developing world. And the product's called, who gives a crap? <laughs> so, as soon as I had the idea for who gives a crap, I knew this was going to work for three reasons. First of all, the market size is huge. It's toilet paper's touching more lives than Tony Abbott, than <laughs> Oprah, even than Justin Bieber's haircut. Everyone uses toilet paper every single day. Secondly, when compared to existing brands in the market, we realized that there was this great opportunity to move away from traditional marketing that's focused on puppies, pillows, and feathers to create something that was fun and well-packaged and well-designed and really stand out. We wanted to be the Ben and Jerry's or the Movember of the toilet paper space. <laughs> and thirdly, compared to our, well, when we looked at our competitors, our initial market research showed that we actually had about 1,200% more puns available. <laughs> now, it turns out starting a toilet paper company is not actually very easy. The minimum production runs about 50,000 rolls, which is obviously quite expensive to produce, but at the same time, if you get stuck with that much toilet paper because no one wants it, you've got a pretty big problem. So, to get things started, we actually launched a crowdfunding campaign in July last year where we set ourselves you know, a goal of pre-selling the first $50,000 of product. Now, the campaign, to kind of help it along, I agreed to sit on a toilet on a live web feed until we hit that $50,000 <laughs> target. So, the campaign, um, if we can get the slide up, had a, uh, basically a, an image of me um, sitting on a toilet with a counter, and the slide that we'll see in a second shows that this is about two and a half hours in, when things are still pretty comfortable, you know, it's, it's going quite well, um, and obviously, you know, we've got, we're pretty optimistic at this point. But uh, fortunately, what happened was the campaign went viral pretty quickly. We got picked up by national television in Australia, and from there, global media kind of <laughs> went, pretty, went pretty crazy. So, without any marketing budget at all, we ended up creating about a million dollars of PR value and received 2.5 million social media impressions. After 50 hours, 50 long, sore, sleepless hours, we hit that $50,000 pre-sales target, which was pretty good. So, you know, we obviously attracted a lot of media attention, we won a bunch of awards for what we did, but we didn't want to stop there because we knew that we were on a roll. <laughs> so, we started to think about how we could create a physical product that people would want to share, how we could, you know, I guess create something that someone would want to give to someone else or tell someone else about. And we realized that 
because we weren't initially selling in supermarkets, we'd just be online, we had the capacity to do something a bit different. So we packaged all of our product in individual rolls in these fun and unique packaging, and we put three emergency rolls in the bottom of every box so you knew when you were just about to run out. <laughs> and then, because, you know, let's face it, bathroom habits are pretty predictable, we set up a subscription service so you could sign up and get a regular delivery, and basically, you know, we'd make sure that you would never run out of toilet paper again. But what happened next was something that we hadn't really predicted. Our supporters started to basically post photos of, um, of our product on social media, sharing it with their friends, and actually giving roles to their neighbors and telling them about what we were doing. So on the next slide, you can see um, our product, uh, some of the photos that people were sharing, where <laughs> you know, they're, they're basically taking photos of their babies and of themselves doing interesting things. And in the bottom right corner, it's a photo of one of our rolls on top of Kilimanjaro, so you know, the, the highest mountain in Africa, which is pretty cool. Um, so what, what we kind of learned from this was that without doing any marketing at all, our, our sales day on day were doubling. And after five days, we sold out of our entire stock of toilet paper, which was obviously a, a big problem, but a, a pretty good problem to have. It took us a couple of months to catch up, and at that point, we um, you know, started getting supply moving really solidly again. And in June last year, or this year actually, we made our first donation and we worked out that from everything that we donated, it basically meant that every single role we'd sold was providing someone with access to a toilet for one week, which is a pretty awesome outcome, especially when all we're asking our customers to do is sit down for something that they believe in. <laughs> so, you know, when I look back, I think about kind of what we've learned from this whole um, experience. The first thing is that Consumers really want products that do good, and you're going to hear more about this today. But we've seen sustainability kind of, you know, come to the forefront of consumer products. Now we're starting to see consumer-driven philanthropy coming to center stage. And everything from wine to watches can be purchased while creating social impact. It's actually getting quite difficult to enter a commodity market without a product that has social impact embedded in the transaction, which is pretty cool, and we're only going to see more of this. Secondly, consumers want to support social causes in a fun manner. People are tired of guilt-driven campaigns. We want, basically, you know, people want to help, but they don't want to be made to feel bad if they're not helping. So we need to encourage you know, a feel-good opportunity in order for someone to engage with what we're doing. And that feel-good opportunity, that feel-good behavior, is what helps someone to really kind of spread the word about a product that you're selling them. So that brings me to the, the third learning, which was virality. And when we're trying to create viral campaigns or products, the trick is to make it both newsworthy and shareable. Newsworthy so that journalists will write about what you're doing and bloggers will write about what you're doing, and shareable so that when someone reads about it, they're going to tell the world about it and you know, help you to get further. And you've always got to remember that if all else fails, you can always just take off your pants. Thank you.